Hello and welcome to the RadioTimes.com Doctor Who podcast. My name's Hugh. My name's Morgan. Uh, and today we are doing an early celebration of a significant anniversary. Uh, it's a sort of birthday to River Song, uh, Alex Kingston's time-travelling character. I was going to say time-travelling temptress, but I thought that was maybe a bit reductive. So I, I, I lost the alliteration. I mean, I said it anyway. So, you know, I, I, you know, I, I lost on both counts. Um, so I'm not sure if this would officially count as River Song's birthday because I'm sure, it isn't, I'm sure there is a day that um, can be pinpointed and some Doctor Who fans can work that out. But uh, this uh, week is the 13-year uh, anniversary of River's first appearance in Doctor Who in 2008's uh, Silence in the Library, Forest of the Dead. And in appropriately River fashion, uh, 13 backwards is 31. And that's the date of the anniversary, the 31st. So Wibbly wobbly, timey wimey, there you yeah, go. Yeah, it's, it's, it's coming in both directions. Um, so yeah, the reason we're looking at that is we just thought it'd be a nice opportunity to look back at River um, and her kind of legacy to the show. Also because we've got a piece coming up next week from one of our freelance writers talking about why he thinks River Song is the greatest Doctor Who companion of all time. So, you know, there's some debate on whether um, River's even technically a Doctor Who companion, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so I don't know, I've talked for a while. This is what I usually say at the beginning of these podcasts now. Um, I guess, Morgan, I don't know if you want to give us a little bit of River Song background. I assume you've done some research. Don't want to, don't want to spring it on you. Um, well, you have. Um, well, no, River River Song, of course. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, debuted in uh, in Silence in the Library, Forest of the Dead, in Series 4, as the Stephen Moffat two-parter. Um, and at the time, quite a mysterious figure. Uh, she knew the Tenth Doctor. He didn't know her. Uh, and it was established that they were to have uh, some sort of relationship in, uh, in, in his future. In, she'd already uh, experienced that in her past. And uh, not all, but but some of that was uh, coloured in uh, throughout the sort of episodes and, and and series that followed. And of course, we found out that River was in fact uh, Melody Pond, the uh, the daughter of uh, of Amy Pond and and Rory Pond, um, uh, who was let's say let's say created um, within the TARDIS. Uh, we don't want to go you know, into too much detail there, but uh, apparently if you have a baby aboard the TARDIS, you create some sort of Time Lord-esque being. I'm guessing, I'm guessing that's like a one-off and no one else has ever um, been baby making in the TARDIS. But anyway, so that's, that's River in a nutshell. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so obviously Stephen Moffat uh, created the character, as you say, and a lot of influence for it came from the Time Traveler's wife. Mm -hmm. um, partly because that's literally what River is, um, but also because there's a kind of back backwards, forwards love story. In that case, um, in that book, it's about um, a man who has an illness that means he randomly travels in time without being able to. So his wife meets him at different stages out of order. And weirdly, and another kind of full circle thing, Stephen Moffat is now actually just doing mm. the time traveler's wife <laughs> for HBO. He's cut out the middle man. Um, so I'll be interested to see if there's any little... Uh, and I'm sure loads of Doctor Who fans will watch it and be like, oh my God, this is exactly like the Doctor and River song. Um, but maybe there'll be what some a rip off as well. Yeah, who knows? Um, it's also worth noting in a weird thing, I was just reading about how um, apparently one of the original like casting ideas for River Song was mm. that it was going to be Kate Winslet. Yes, uh, River of East Town. Um, yeah, I was just about to say, I've just been watching Mayor of East Town, so it's quite odd to, uh, to imagine that. But I mean, I feel like if they cast Kate Winslet, somehow in that two-parter we would definitely not have seen as much of River Song as we ended up seeing with Alex Kingston I, I don't know if they would have been able to kind of Kate Winslet probably not that Alex Kingston doesn't have a lot of work she does but Kate Winslet is like a full-blown you know leading lady movie star like I feel like she, her schedule's pretty packed yeah but it's interesting though because I think people forget now because she is so closely associated with with Doctor Who that Alex Kingston was and, and sort of is a, a big name to mm. get you know at the time in particular you know she'd just come off seven years of ER which was like the you know one of the biggest shows in the US at the time um so when she was cast as River Song that was star casting it was a really really yeah. good get for Doctor Who now we just sort of think oh yeah Alex Kingston River Song of course because she's like I say she's so ingrained in the franchise such a key part of the franchise and she continues to play River now for Big Finish and so on um and she's She's clearly very heavily invested in the character. You know, she's just recently um, written written a novel 
um, about River. But the actually, Ruby's yeah. curse. There you go. So Alex Kingston, though, was was a really good get for, for Doctor Who at the time. Um, and I think that relationship um, between the Doctor and River was a really interesting one because you mentioned Time Traveller's wife and uh, famously, like, knew, knew Who was um a bit more forthcoming and like exploring the doctor as a romantic figure and so it, it kind of done the doctor and rose where they were in love but actually for various reasons they could never be together forever um they're just from two different worlds literally <laughs> um and then you had uh the doctor and martha where it was unrequited love and then you had um the doctor and donna where they were just you know it was purely platonic and they were just friends and then it River is the first time where you go, well, okay, actually, if all time travel logistics were kind of, and the fact that the Doctor's immortal, if you take all of that out of it, what would what would it look like if the Doctor were in a, in a I'm not going to say a fully functioning relationship, because it's probably quite a dis- dysfunctional relationship, but it's the first time you really explore um, what the Doctor would be like as a, as a boyfriend or a, or a husband. And it's one of the few times, you know, at the end of Husbands of River Song, he actually does settle down um, only mm. for 24 years, which for a Time Lord is, is, uh, is yeah, probably not all that long. It's but long actually, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but actually, um, it's, it's kind of a one-off in Doctor Who, that, that relationship where he's actively involved in a romantic relationship with the Doctor. Definitely, yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of the concepts that I actually liked the most in Doctor Who, um, in New Who, was that kind of, it was, a I thought, quite a clever way of playing around with the mechanics of time travel in a way that was still engaging in an emotional mm. sense, if you know what I mean. So it was a little, like, random comparison, but you know in um, the 2005 series, when Rose is only gone for a few days, her perspective, but accidentally misses a year. Mm. Um, uh, and, and, and I thought that was quite a, Doctor Who can get a bit kind of, I don't know, uh, into its own mythology and stuff and a bit confusing. But I felt like that was a really clear emotional kind of reactive way to show, you know, what time travel might actually be like. And I really liked the way the River Song uh, storyline picked up that from the other angle and kind of was like, well, you know, if you've got more than one time traveller, it's not all, you know, you're going to be, you could experience things in different orders. You know, if you think about the way the Doctors travel through time and space, the Doctor's been in, you know, uh, the 1940s a load of different times uh, in, in at different stages at one point when you know the status quo you know was not as far away from that as it is now if that makes sense so yeah i really like the way that the kind of river storyline almost put the doctor on the back foot as well where mm. you know someone knew more than him it was you know one of these rare occasions where and also where um another thing that Stephen Moffat always liked doing was kind of playing with the mythology of the Doctor, which is something the show quite enjoys anyway, by kind of saying, oh, oh, this is the Doctor. You're not the Doctor, though. The Doctor's way cooler. You know, oh, man, this Doctor, you're good. Oh, man. Oh, you're so lame now. When do you get good? You know, and you're like, yeah. and you're like, oh, wow, what's that going to be like? Turns out it's, she was kind of exaggerating. Like, he was still pretty similar. He just, she's, just, he, she's just really into the 11th Doctor and the 12th Doctor, just not a 10th Doctor stand. Not a 10th Doctor stand. I mean, what, no. what can you say? Everyone's got different preferences. Yeah, no, but it's it's a really good point about the um the, the nature of their relationship and uh, the way that you know they weave in and out of each other's lives. Um, because actually, River as a character answers um a, a question that fans always had about the classic series of Doctor Who in particular, which is if the Doctor is traveling through time and space, and let's say the Master is traveling through time and space, the odds of them always meeting in the right order are like. In infinitesimally small. I don't even yeah. know if I said that word right, but you get you get what I'm saying. <laughs> like it's incredibly, incredibly small. That would it just wouldn't happen, right? Um, I mean, the odds of them running into each other at all are pretty slim. But for them to always do it in the right order, it just it just wouldn't happen. Um, the the reason it happens is is for for narrative reasons because you know, you need to have the kind of um, the same actor playing the master and the same actor playing the doctor, and they have to kind of uh, their their relationship has to unfold in a kind of narrative way. Um, but actually, this this played with that, and as you say, River kind of knew a future doctor. Um, she knew spoilers about it about his future, and so that that impacted. And now, you know, we've seen um, again, you know, take big finish. They actually do play around with that a little bit more, and you have say the fourth doctor meet 
uh, you know, the the Jeffrey Beaver's master. No, mm. wait, he met the Jeffrey Beaver's master on TV. You get you, um, you but you get you know, um, I don't know, Fifth Doctor meets Missy, that kind of thing, don't you? Where where yeah. they kind of mix it mix it up a little bit. But that was something that classic Doctor Who never did for narrative reasons. Um, River is kind of the first example of where, um, of of where yeah, two time travelers really do kind of have that that type of relationship. I think as well, I really like that bit in Science of Library where the doctor's kind of like to Donna, oh no, spoilers, you can't look ahead, you can't read about your own life. Blah, blah, blah. And then when River comes on, he's like, no, wait, well, I, but I get to know everything. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. like it was yeah. it was just quite a good, it was quite a good thing. I mean, it's the thing that um, Tom says in his piece actually is that River's one of the few people, one of the reasons that she's technically not a companion is that she is kind of her own person. She's more like, um, you know, a Time Lord or like the doctor mm. in that she's having her own adventures and kind of, does her own thing um and i think that's quite interesting i mean i i am actually quite glad of the big finish stuff you just mentioned on another note because um, one of the things that always annoyed me um about river song was that i feel like the way that that first two part is written um it's sort of like it seems like she was supposed to be uh, hanging out with the 10th doctor at least a couple more times because mm. she knows what he looks like. And there's this bizarre bit which goes like, oh, judging by your face, it's early days. Have we done the crash of the Byzantium yet? It's like, he was a completely different guy. <laughs> like, he, he was Matt Smith. Like, he doesn't look in any way the same. She's like, have we done that yet? And I'm like, surely you know what order he's in. Um, <laughs> anyway, this is a real, like, bugbear. Um, anyway, but anyway, yeah, generally speaking, I was a bit like, I found it odd that she only actually meets the 10th Doctor once mm. in that, at that point, you know, and then it's kind of, I'm like, so how did she recognize him? How did she know? And then basically it's sort of, I feel like implied in Time of Angels or whatever, that maybe they've met again since then because Matt Smith is sort of quite resigned to her. Yeah. In a weird sort of way. And, and he's not, and the 11th Doctor as well, he's not, he doesn't act as if he's just seeing her for the first time since he saw her die. And I know no. the Doctor is kind of alien and, and often reacts to, to death in, in, it's kind of like a bit of an inconsistency in Doctor Who, where sometimes one death will really upset the Doctor, but sometimes, uh, you know, a, a bunch of people dying, he'll be very cold, and I'm an alien, I'm a Time Lord, I don't care. Um, yeah. But, but you know, certainly that's someone who he was, who is kind of had an attachment to, and he doesn't when he first sees her in 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 Series Five. It doesn't seem like it's the first time since he saw her die. Um, no. So yeah, so it's I think it was always implied um, that. The, that River and the Tenth Doctor had had further adventures, but Big Finish just made uh, the subtext text as they are wont to do. Yeah, well, I really like that. I think that's one of the best things Big Finish could do, really, is like basically fill out things specifically that annoy me um, and make them <laughs> yeah. and make them make sense. That's all. That's yeah. all I want. I mean, I mean, I'm sure they'd like to think that they, you know, they tell rich new stories that build on the Doctor Who mythos. They don't just join the dots and, and fill in little gaps that please us. But if they can do both, why not do why not do both? It's a win win. Uh, um, it is a win win. It is funny though, looking at back at the kind of I was thinking about this um, earlier. Obviously, um, River has on screen uh, hung out with three doctors, mostly Matt mm. Smith, but also David Tennant, and then Peter Capaldi for the end. And with each doctor, she kind of has her like goodbye i'm dying bit so which is <laughs> yeah. in kind of a weird yeah. order so the first one is like where she physically dies in front of us and then he puts her as a data ghost or whatever um and mm. then in the matt smith era they kind of find a way to add a bit onto that um where in name of the doctor yeah, yeah. where she's a little data ghost and he kind of like helps her <laughs> fly away into the ether i haven't watched that one in a while i think that's what happens um and then then there is a little bit in um this is one for the real heads now. Uh, there is a little bit in um, these sort of DVD minisodes, which oh, yeah. is supposed to imply that um, she and Matt Smith's doctor go off to Drillium and have their final Drillium. Yeah. yeah. And then in um, The Husbands of River Song, they wreck on that and say like, oh yeah, you put on your suit and like took me there, but then we didn't go in or something. Which um, is so incredible. Which is incredible attention to detail because Stephen Moffat is assuming that everyone watching Husbands of River Song on Christmas Day on BBC One is like, wait a minute, that contradicts that mini sode from that DVD. Which, to yeah. be fair, Doctor Who fans, Doctor Who fans would do. Like the vast majority of the audience wouldn't care, but I, I like that there's yeah that attention to detail, that little nod in there. Exactly, and you know, like, and it, I don't think if you didn't know, you'd even clock that that's what they were doing. And then in that episode, obviously, that's the one where Peter Capaldi meets her. Um, and she doesn't know who he is, so they kind of have a that, that's Which a kind of reversal of the original kind of dynamic. 
Um, mm. And then he kind of gets that goodbye again. So it's that goodbye, then the David Tennant goodbye, then the Matt Smith goodbye in chronological order. Um, True. And I, I had a question for you, which is Ooh. which which doctor on screen do you think River works best with? I think she kind of has hmm. like a different dynamic. I think they're all good with 10, 11 and 12. But which do you think which do you think works best? That's a really good question. For me, I was thinking about it. And actually, even though it's not the one you see the most of, I like Capaldi and Kingston together. I think that's the best. I don't know why. I don't know if it's that that little fun dynamic of he you know she doesn't know who he is or if it's just the 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 sort of rompy style and tone of of husbands of river song or whether it's the final scene on derillium at the end of that episode which i really really like i think it's really sweet and really well nicely handled um but i just think those two together work work really well i would agree in a way i i think that they were the most convincing couple um Mm. in an old sort of way possibly because they are a little closer in age as well um that probably doesn't hurt but um obviously big parties a bit older i think um but yeah no i kind of felt like i believed them as like weirdly as like a married couple in a way that (laughs) it wasn't always entirely convincing uh with the others and also i think considering that peter body had one episode with her i think it's impressive how much kind of like i don't know chemistry they managed to have between them and how much fun and then the fact that there's in i think is the next episode he turns up in which is the christmas especially a year later because they're a year off he's still very sad about it in quite a and then again i think they play around with that in his final series and actually you're kind of like oh yeah the doctor and river and it's like but this doctor barely met river like obviously it is one of the kind of triumphs of that i think yeah. you kind of totally buy into the fact you believe that, it yeah. yeah exactly and part of that that is doctor who and we and we do have this kind of backstory where obviously we know that river and the doctor have had this long relationship but obviously the doctor was played by someone else so the fact that Pete Capaldi kind of managed to keep that going is impressive I would say they're pretty good really I'm gonna say again like well, I feel like we're slagging off last I actually think David Tennant and Alex Kingston is quite good because yeah I feel like that that series is such a good one for David Tennant like he really knew well I mean he always knew what he was doing but I feel like that is a particularly good series for him it's and I feel series. like yeah it was just quite an unusual dynamic between them like we've because he was always kind of the like Slightly less so with Donna, I suppose, but he was always kind of like the kind of alpha, heroic, kind of handsome yeah. figure in his yeah. era of Doctor Who. You know, he was the handsome hero kind of swinging in saving the day. Um, and then with River, he really didn't like being less in control. And I thought that was actually quite an interesting dynamic, especially because we all loved the 10th Doctor. Like He was probably one mm. of the more like beloved Doctors. And to see someone else being like, you're not that great, it was actually quite a like... <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it was the thing to do yeah. with that character. No, I think you're right. Like if there's if there's one Doctor Who, it's especially entertaining to see kind of shaken up a little bit and be a bit less because the tenth Doctor is, as you say, he's kind of like the swaggering, confident mm. Doctor, isn't he? And so it works. It works best that um, having a character thrown in there to kind of um, throw him off a little bit and make him a bit more unsure of himself. Like that doesn't. That maybe doesn't work as well with the 11th doctor and again i think like matt smith and alex kingston were great together but i think yeah no i i think that that dynamic of especially for her debut where the doctor doesn't know who she is and she knows so much about him and he's really kind of taken aback by that and befuddled by that that works best with the 10th doctor who we are so used to being kind of all knowing and 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 all confident yeah i mean i don't know if it would have kept working with more episodes like part of the reason Mm. maybe that we're not saying as much about Matt Smith is that he had a lot of time with Alice Kingston. We kind of saw them in good episodes. We saw them in less good episodes. Like you kind of, mm. she was kind of his on part of his ensemble cast as much yeah, as anything. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Like through the whole era as well. Like she was there, you know, briefly with Clara, mostly with Amy and Rory for obvious reasons. Um, but yeah, like, so maybe I, I, I'm just thinking back. I, I can't quite, obviously there are episodes that plot wise are very much about River. I can't mm. quite think of a brilliant, like, character episode with river and uh the matt smith doctor if that makes sense you know what i mean like a smaller one like i think maybe because not the signs in the library for the dead are smaller stories but like i think that was the introduction that was a really strong clear idea of what the river song story is and then husbands of river song um is kind of that kind of quieter story like the threat's a little mm. bit less severe it's a little bit more about the characters I quite enjoyed that as well. Although I know that's not everyone's favourite episode, uh, The Husbands of Riverside. I quite, I, I quite like that one. I quite um, like it, but I know some people really don't. So just, just, yeah. just you are heard. <laughs> you know, we, we know that uh, it's not everyone's cup of tea. 
I think I think the thing is with with River, she was kind of her character was at at its most prominent in the 11th doctor's era mm. um and and so actually whereas with the 10th doctor you had that one two-parter where she was the focus and then with the 12th doctor you had that one christmas special where she was the focus um ser- series uh six kind of dipped in and out a little bit more mm. um so she was kind of like peppered throughout uh yeah um the the, the series six opening two-parter and then throughout up until um you know, the the wedding of river song at the end of the series um and you know pops up in let's kill hitler and so on and so on but i think maybe maybe that's slightly less satisfying it, you know she doesn't have these kind of one off episodes devoted to her character she's more um you know like a supporting character who um pops up throughout the series and there's kind of mysteries um related to her that are, are wrapped up in the whole of the mythos that's going on with the silence and everything mm. but actually maybe she's a character that works better in those one-off appearances where she's kind of like the sole focus as opposed to part of the series arc i don't know I, i'd agree i also think that because so much of her time in the matt smith era was taken up with kind of parceling out that initial mystery and how it mm. all fitted together and filling in all the gaps so it was all tied up with one bow i feel like that's kind of that's kind of characterized my memory of that period is like mm. the kind of oh this was this and this means this and actually look this is this and it was a bit like you know, like when when you didn't quite know what her full backstory was, it was so mysterious. Like, oh, who is this person? She's so yeah. interesting. And then it's like, oh, okay, well, she was born this age, and then she was in this, you know, orphanage, and then she was uh, Amy Pond's best friend for a few years, and then she turned into the middle aged woman that we already know she looks like, and that's it. And now we're all now we're all back to back to square. It was a bit like, oh, okay, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's classic Doctor Who. Like, it's part of the reason that they've tried to open up the Doctor's backstory again, right? It's like once mm. you actually explain it all, it kind of yeah. ruins. Exactly. Everyone, everyone thinks they want to know the answers, but as soon as you know, it's it's much less interesting. Um, but actually, I think once so that's probably it, isn't it? Is is when she debuts, there's all the mystery. That's that's really interesting. Then the eleventh Doctor's era is mostly about answering those questions, which is yeah. probably you know arguably never the most interesting part of a mystery. And then once that's done with, and you've got Husbands of River Song, you kind of you can kind of put all that to one side and go, okay, we know she is, but that's not really, you know, the fact that she's Amy and Rory's daughter is not really the most interesting thing about River Song. The most interesting mm-hmm. thing about River Song is that she's a kind of cool, vivacious, fun character to have around. And you can just kind of get back to that with with the with the Twelfth Doctor. Yeah, I agree. And I think you feel like part of the thing with that story was they were just like, let's see what happens if we put these two together. And that's yeah. actually quite a fun way to start it, I think. Um, with that in mind, um, I'm going to ask you this question. Uh, do we think River will be back uh, to meet the Jodie Whittaker Doctor? Well, you know, I, I know um, that question has been put to Jodie Whittaker and she said that she is, you know, really keen on the idea. And same, I, Alex Kingston has said that mm. she's she's open to return. And as we've said, she's, you know, she's writing a, um, a, a River Song novel and she's still involved in, in Big Finish audio drama. So she's still playing the role. So she's clearly like, not turned her back on it in any way, shape, or form. Um, in 2017, uh, Stephen Moffat, you know, just as he was kind of looking to wrap up his uh, his era in, in Doctor Who magazine, a fan put a question to him about, you know, is Husbands of River Song the last we'll see of River? Um, and he said, well, yes, that does seem like the end to me, except of course it isn't and can't be. There's always the chance that River will show up again at some other point in her timeline with a stolen camel, seven more husbands and a nuclear submarine. Uh, big finish isn't done with her, I believe, and any reason to get Alex Kingston back in action is a good one. Um, and he then goes on to say that like, for him, he was kind of, there, there would not be, and indeed there weren't any more uh river song appearances in you know within his era um and in fact you know he'd originally planned for husbands of river song to be his his mm. farewell so actually that's why it ends on derillium as much as anything to kind of close out his era, kind of ties together, era. yeah, yeah. Like um it. so but i think he knows that um river now is is a character who's made such an impact she feels like um I always feel like this is a, this is a bad thing to say, but it's I really don't mean it to be part of the Doctor Who furniture in the sense yeah. of like it's a it's not a character that was part of part of one era and is and is forever part of that era and it it would be weird if they came back. It feels like River could come back at any time. Um, yeah, it's it's a character like like the Brigadier from the classic series, or even like if you look like something like Osgood. Um, that's why I personally that's why I don't really 
consider her a companion and it's mm. not because it's a not not because it's a slight i think there's a few reasons why not mostly because i mean it's a really good point you make about she's kind of her own hero like she's not coming on board the tardis waiting for the doctor to take her on adventures i think if anything she probably thinks that the doctor is her companion yeah um, <laughs> um so but but and also the, the fact that she kind of feels like um like a, a major supporting character and like part of the larger doctor who mythos that she could she could return at any time and it wouldn't it, she can just pop up i mean i think i wouldn't be d disappointed if she never appeared again only yeah, because yeah. only because i think the character did have such a you know perfect arc across the series like we say debuts with a lot of mystery uh you then have the kind of the unraveling of that mystery and then it, it gets tied up in a nice neat little bow at the end of husbands of river song um you know so as with anything there's, there's it's doctor who so there's ways and means in which you could bring her back but you need to be careful that you don't do it in such a way that would um undermine anything that's that's come before definitely I think as well, like with um, the Stephen Moffat quote, it's worth noting, obviously uh, she's a Stephen Moffat joint uh, is River Song. So um, he definitely needs to sign <laughs> off when he plans to bring her back. But, um, you know, we believe that he has done that for the Weeping Angels, which are another, um, you know, character slash monster creation for the next series. So there's nothing to say that he, you know, there's nothing to say that just because Stephen Moffat created her, that River Song couldn't come back in the Chris Chibnall era of Doctor Who. I personally think it would be quite, I feel like it would be a different thing to do in the same way that bring her back with Peter Capaldi uh, was a slightly different thing to do with the character. I feel like it would be a different thing to do to have her, you know, team up with Jodie Whittaker's Doctor um, just because it's the first female Doctor, at least the first female official one that we've seen on screen properly versus, you know, timeless child stuff. Um, and I feel like, you know, if the rumours are true of Jodie Whittaker leaving, you would feel like, was this a bit of a missed opportunity to do something quite fun and quite cool? But equally, you know, you can't have everything and maybe they just couldn't think of a good story, you know? Maybe they just didn't think it would work. Well, yeah, but does it does it feel like um, when the ninth Doctor, for example, who recently has returned to the worlds of Doctor mm -hmm. Who via Big Finish again, um, ninth Doctor, because he had a, a short run, never met the Cybermen, uh, never met the, Br the Brigadier. And again, now Big Finish have got Christopher Eccleston back. They're like, right, let's immediately have him meet uh, the Cybermen and meet the Brigadier now in the form of John Coleshaw, but still, and it's, it's kind of like, again, it's, it's not just a, you know, a cynical box ticking exercise, but it's kind of giving the fans what they want to see. And, and I think you're right. And it's, you know, if, if the, uh, Jodie Whittaker's Doctor and, and River Song never met, maybe it would feel along similar lines. Would it feel like a missed opportunity sort of akin to not meeting a classic monster or, or another classic character? Um, what I'm basically saying is if it doesn't happen in series 13, Big Finish will probably get around to it someday anyway. They'll get Jody back. Alex is already on board and it'll happen. It'll happen on audio, if not on TV. I think you're probably right, to be honest. I hadn't thought of that. But yeah, I mean, give it like three years if, if Jody's amenable to coming back that quickly. And assuming she actually leaves, who knows? We don't actually know what's going to happen. Um, but what do you think, people listening at home? Uh, would you like to see River Song uh, coming back to meet with Jodie Whittaker's Doctor. I know we've asked you that before uh, in recent months, but you know, always, you might change your mind. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, um, do you think that uh, our writer is correct saying that she's the greatest companion of all time? Do you think that she is even a companion? As Morgan says, there's some debate on that point. Is she just a character? Uh, let us know in the comments um, if you're listening to us on YouTube uh, or, you know, you can tweet at us if you want at Radio Times. Um, you can find this podcast obviously on YouTube, as I said, also on Acast, Spotify, Apple Podcasts and things like that. Uh, we'll be back next week with another exciting episode um, about something or other, uh, which we'll decide and slash announce near the time. Um, until then, I've been Hugh. I've been Morgan. Uh, and plot twist, we're actually both at different points in our timeline. So uh, I haven't even reviewed the Christopher Eccleston Big Finish yet. I don't know what, you know, that's, that's oh, happening in the future. It's good. You'll enjoy it. Don't worry. Oh, great. Glad to hear it. All right. Thanks for listening and goodbye. <laughs>